Hi everyone, welcome back to the My Clay Co studio. Today we are talking Cernet Polymer Clay. Now, if you've been wanting to try Cernet Polymer Clay but a little bit bamboozled by all of the different lines that they have, you are not alone. It is a frequently asked question that we get. So, we thought we'd make a video explaining all the different lines. Now, Cernet Polymer Clay does have a few different lines. They have Cernet number one, translucent, opaline, nature, neon light, metallic, and pearl. The Cernet Polymer Clay range is manufactured in Belgium and is popular all over the world, but particularly in Europe. Now, all of their polymer clay lines are really durable and hold details well, so they're excellent for both modeling as well as polymer clay jewelry. So today we're gonna to be running through all of the lines of the Cernet Polymer Clay range, and I'm also going to be going through a few tips and tricks that I found along the way working with Cernet Polymer Clay. First up, Cernet number one. Now, Cernet number one has an amazing array of colors that you can choose from, and particularly with the greens, reds, and pinks, you are spoiled for choice. Now, I love working with Cernet number one because the finish that you get is this beautiful, smooth finish of the clay. If you've worked with Sculpey Primo, it's very similar to the finish that you get on that. It's a nice, smooth surface. Cernet translucent. Now, this would have to be the most popular of all of the Cernet lines, and that is because the translucency of the translucent is amazing. One of the things I love about the Cernet Translucent is it is quite a white color base, whereas if you compare it to say the Sculpey Translucent, that one has quite a yellow color base. So I find that the white color base makes it easier for you to work it with any other color. The translucency of Cernet Translucent is also one of the best on the market. And you will find that if you do run your clay really thin, that it is see-through and one of the things that I love doing with it is rolling it really thin and then putting a resin dome over the top of it you get almost a glass-like finish it is absolutely spectacular now the Cernet translucent does come in the normal translucent or clear color but it does have a range of other colors that you can choose from so in the translucent range, there are three glitter colors that have glitter through them. So there's a white glitter, a silver glitter, and a gold glitter. There is also the glow in the dark one, which is very cool. And there are also another nine colors that you can choose from. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these colored ones is when you do bake them, they will come out a bit darker. So it is a great idea if you're going to be using these colors just to do a bit of a test bake beforehand so you know what color you're working with and you're not disappointed at the end of it because it has turned a different color. As with all translucents, you can also make your own translucent color using the basic translucent clay. You can add pigment powders or micas in there or even a little dab of other colored clay to give it a different colored effect. But just keep in mind that that will dull down that translucency a little bit. Now the opaline line of the range. This has to be one of the most intriguing lines because you will find that it's got like a semi-translucency to it. So the thing I love about this is it ends up baking with this almost porcelain-like finish. It's absolutely gorgeous and I find it's particularly beautiful if you're working with florals. Now just like the translucent line of clay, you will find that the colors bake a little bit darker. So again, I would highly recommend baking some tester pieces before you start working with it. Cernet Nature. This has to be one of my favorite lines because you really don't need to do anything to it and it gives your pieces a lot of character. So there are three different colors in the Cernet Nature line. They are granite, savannah and basalt and they are all beautiful. Now, as you can see, they do have quite coarse bits in them. So if you compare it to say the Sculpey Grey Granite, that is quite a fine granity look. These coarse black bits give it that really nice kind of peppery effect and it has a lot more texture than your normal standard polymer clay. Now, I love the granite one as is, but I also do use it regularly with other clay colors mixed in. So I normally use about one quarter color mixed with three quarters of the granite and it comes up with some beautiful pastel-y granite kind of colors. You can, of course, mix different quantities, experiment a little bit and come up with your own gorgeous granite colors. The Savannah one I particularly love if you're using beach themed creations. 
And the basalt one is such a gorgeous green and it really is different to any other colors out there. So the next line of clay we're gonna look at is the neon light. So the neon light range is basically a range of fluorescent colors. So it comes with yellow, green, fuchsia, as well as orange. Now, one thing to keep in mind with these neon colors, they are quite bright when they're raw, but I do find that they dull a little bit when you bake them. So this is another instance where it's probably great for you to do a bit of a tester so that you know exactly what color you're working with. Now, I'll look at the metallic and the pearl ones together because you're probably wondering what is the difference between the two. So both of them are micro enriched. So it means that they're a bit different to a lot of the glitter kind of clays out there. They've got more of a sparkly kind of finish with that micro. It's a little bit more subtle. You will find that the metallic one is kind of like this shiny metallic look versus the pearl ones that have more of a pearlescent shimmery look to them. So if you're thinking metallics, think gorgeous golds, silvers, bronze that you can work into your pieces. They also have colors like turquoise gold and pink gold that are absolutely gorgeous. And if you think about the pearl range, it's more of a whimsical shimmery kind of look that you're gonna get. Both of them are really spectacular to work with and they give your pieces such a gorgeous metallic or pearlescent look to them. So we've gone through the different lines of Cernet and of course, if you have any questions about them, you're welcome to drop a comment below. But I thought I'd also go through a couple of tips and tricks that I've found along the way with working with Cernet. Now, I always find it so interesting when people talk to me about Cernet. On one hand, I get feedback that it is quite a firm clay, whereas on the other hand, I get other people tell me that it's quite a soft clay to work with. And in my experience, you definitely do find both. So I find probably the Cernet number one range a bit firmer, whereas quite often I find the translucent ones a little bit softer to work with. Now that's fine, we just need to work with the firmness or the softness of that clay, and I have a few tips for this. So one thing I found with Cernet, if you do have a firmer block, it likes warmth. So what you can do is rather than starting to just condition your whole block of clay, I find slicing it into thin pieces will help you condition it a bit easier. So slicing it into these thin pieces will mean that you can get that warmth into it easier and you can work the clay easier and get it going. And once you've warmed it up, you will find it easy to work with from there. Now, on the other hand, you might find that perhaps you get some Cernet clay and it is a bit soft. Now, in these instances, you may find that you need to leach your clay. If you're not sure what leaching is, basically it's just putting your clay between a couple of pieces of printer paper or copy paper so that you can leach out some of those oils. Now, leaching out these oils will mean that it dries out the clay a little bit and it makes it more workable. One thing to be aware of, if you are leaching your clay, you need to make sure that you don't leave it in between that paper for too long because otherwise you might dry out too much of the oils. So I normally just leave it in there for a couple of minutes, have a bit of a look and see where to go from there. You might need to put it in there for two minutes. You might need to put it in there for 20 minutes. You might need to put it in there for half an hour. So you're really just doing it until you find that it's at that workable texture. I hope you found our video explaining the Cernet Polymer Clay range helpful today. If you do have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments below. We're always happy to help and we will see you next time.